This is going to be a, a review of Project Server, some of the basic or some of the high-level functionality. It's going to be very short. What we're doing right now is we're logged into Project Server, and based on your role within the system, that's going to determine two primary things. Uh, number one, what you get to see for data, projects, and resources primarily, and what you get to do within the tool set. And what you can do primarily, you're going to see these items over here. These are the menu items which lead to the different areas of functionality. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, put on my project manager hat or my executive hat here, and I would like to navigate to what's called Project Center. And this is a great place where I can analyze all the projects in the system that I happen to have permission to be able to see. And again, being an administrator, I'm going to be able to see everything within the project. And here are all the projects that I can see. Currently, they are grouped by a piece of metadata called program. And um, advantage of this is if you have a large number of projects, you're able to see the projects in some kind of recognizable form or, or grouping. And in this case, you can see asset management program. These are the projects that comprise that program. Your corporate website and the projects within there. We can see the aggregate for the total cost, uh, return on investment, total benefits work. Also note that we can have graphical indicators. These uh, graphical indicators, you can have them for multiple KPIs, cost, schedule are very common. And it's also very common to have them based on a automatic calculation, for instance, the variance between your baseline and your actuals. Now, based on what I have selected, that will determine what the ribbon up above will display for functionality. And depending on whether or not I have items checked in or checked out, that will also determine whether or not some of these items are enabled or disabled. Uh, there is a capability to edit projects in the web. I could click on one of these projects and open it for editing if I really wish to. I will go ahead and skip that for now. What I'm going to do is change my view. Your administrator, based on what the requirements of the customer are, will set up different views for you. And that's part of the deployment process is to work with a customer to determine, hey, what types of views do you need, uh, excuse me, need within the system. Uh, this is a view that would show us all the projects within the system with regard to a customer's methodology. Create governance phase. Within create, we have two steps, initiate and define. Um, initiate would really be use something, a request that was entered into the system. We don't know if we want to pursue it yet, but uh, it is a request we have to consider. Uh, something that's in define is something that's been approved for further definition, and so on in this particular case. Uh, we're going to go to a simple summary view. Just a really, you know, nothing special here, just a list of the projects sorted by the project name. I'm going to look at this project here for a moment, software development plan. And um, based on the view I was in last, that'll bring up the view first when I get into the project once it opens up. And we'll be able to view a couple of things here. And the reason I'm going into this mode is, is for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, I do want to be able to look at the project schedule. That's one of the primary benefits of being able to click on the project here and drill into additional information. The, um, the other thing is to be able to view project information other than the project tasks. Start dates, finish dates, work, um, things of that nature. And to, to capture project metadata such as project description, business need, things of that nature. Uh, currently, we're on the schedule project detail page. And of course, you can see here's the project schedule, tasks, summary tasks, start date, finish date. Uh, we can see a timeline view. I can determine what items show up here in this timeline view. Of course, we're going to have the Gantt chart off to the right. Graphically shows us the timeline of the project, all the tasks, and so forth. And like we said before, the ribbon above depending on what I have selected at a moment in time, depending on whether the project's checked out, and currently you can see it is checked out, that will determine what functionality is enabled and what I can do with the project. And you can see I can set a baseline, I can insert tasks, I can delete tasks, and so forth. These items, off to the left, project details, financials, business case, uh, and so on, these are called uh, project detail pages. We'll call them PDPs for short. You can have as many or as few depending on the needs of the organization. And what these allow you to do is capture more of that metadata that I was talking about. For instance, think of a project chart or a status report. You're going to have information such as the description. You might want to understand the program, the department, the sponsor. You might have stakeholders that you want to capture, propose start and finish date. Uh, you might have another form such as business case. What is the background? What are the success factors? What's the role of PMO? 
uh, potential risk mitigation. Okay. Uh, now, yeah, this is demonstration data, of course. Think about your organization for a minute. What would your organization want to capture for data? And we would configure and create PDPs for you. That would be very customer centric for what you need to capture. And again, you may have one form, you may have two, you may have five. Again, it's what you need to capture and how you want to segregate that data out in the different forms. Uh, this final form, name, status summary, this is really a form intended to be filled out every status reporting period by your PM. Then you can see we have five KPIs. They uh, right now represent just the colors based on a process that's done outside the system. Red, red for health and quality, yellow for uh, resource schedule, red for cost. Currently we're in a status of execution. So there's what the information is going to look like when you happen to be looking at the project detail. Let's go ahead and check that back in. Once it checks in, we're going to navigate down to Resource Center. I could, you know, again, have my project manager hat on, have my resource manager hat on. All about resource information here. We're going to have uh, a few different types of resources. I can have cost, I can budget. I can have generic resources. I'm going to have labor resources. Currently, I have the check boxes for a few checked. You can see them here. I'm going to start out at a high level, look at resource availability. Um, there's... Several different ways to look at the information in this next view. Typically, I, I always switch to what's called a remaining availability view because I really find that personally to be the easiest type of view to read the information. And if you look at this drop down list, you'll see the different types of views, remaining availability here. If you think for a minute, each resource has a calendar associated with that resource that states how many hours per day, how many days per week they can work. And based on that, and you know, you know the thing to take into consideration is the time period and the number of months. You know, we're looking at increments of months. I could be looking at anywhere from days to years. If we look at this, bars above the zero plane represent availability. So your full-time FTEs, for the most part, are going to be able to work anywhere between 160 to 184 hours in a month. Bars at the zero plane represent 100% utilization. Bars below represent over allocations. Therefore, if I happen to be a PM staffing a project, yeah, it's a fairly good bet, Adam, in this particular case. We can look at Alex for this time period. Uh, it looks like a Glenn John has plenty of availability as well. Uh, when we get over here, it looks like maybe Barry doesn't have sufficient availability. It certainly looks like Erlinger is having some issues in this time period. And then when we get to this next uh, April 1st time period, Adam's not doing very well at all. Good information. We want to find out more. I can come down to the lower portion of this particular screen. I can look at Adam's detail. This will get me down to the particular projects. I can look first at his capacity to do work, again, based strictly on the calendar, not related to the projects he's scheduled to at all. And like we said before, anywhere between 184 and 160 per time period. The projects he's assigned to are underneath here. And we can see in the time frames here, 24 for that period, 32 for that period. We get to the 4-1 time period where you have the issue. We see one project with 198 hours, and we have another for an additional 312 hours. So if we take the capacity and subtract the scheduled work, we come out with a whopping negative 334 hours. So there's our issue. Right? We have two projects for a combination of uh, over you know, just over 500 hours. looks like 510 hours or so. Again, I can take this down another level. I can get right down to the assignments in the project. And this is good because I don't have to wonder at this point. I can get right down to the assignments and find out specifically what assignments. If I happen to own both these projects, it's great because I can take care of the issues. If I don't, I can knock on the door of the other PM and work out some kind of arrangement to replace them. But uh, let's try to find out what the specific issues are. Here are the two projects, e-commerce, router benchmark. If I look at the Gantt chart, you know, I can see overlaps. It's not you know, guarantee that an overlap is going to be an issue. Uh, it's only going to be an issue if he happens to be assigned more than 100% of his capacity to do work on an overlap. But let's look. Two overlaps here start and finish at the same time, 4, 12, 5, 3. You're looking at a three-week time period. Um, and then if we look at this, this is assignment work, not task work. It's his assigned work. Three-week time period, 120 hours. That is a full-time FTE on each task. Therefore, 100% over allocation there. Another overlap here, another 4 1 to 4 22, exactly three weeks, and another 120 hours, so another 
you know, again, full-time FTE, another 100% over allocation. And if you look here, you can see that all four overlap right here. It's a, a very, very big over allocation. It could be a situation where at one point in time, these projects, there was no issue. This project may have slipped quite a bit and therefore this became a big issue. We certainly have issues within the project. Again, it may have been tasks that have slipped. It may have been a situation where these predecessor successor relationships were wrong to begin with. Uh, obviously, there's something wrong within the projects themselves that have to be resolved. Project manager now has sufficient information from which to make those corrections. And that's really you know, some of the power of the resource center, to have all this information at your fingertips. Next and uh, the last area of the tool we're going to look at today is business intelligence. And we're going to start off with creating a report from scratch. I'm going to go to a templates area. I'm going to utilize the OLAP reports here for a moment. They're based on Excel and analysis services in an OLAP cube. I'm going to click this OLAP portfolio analyzer template once it launches. A connection will be established, and once it's fully established, I'll get the pivot table field list here off to the right. And at that point in time, I'll be able to click on checkboxes and add fields to my screen. I'm going to add my program field. It's going to be a very simple report. This is merely just to give you folks an idea of the capabilities. You probably recall these from that very first view I showed you in Project Center in Project Web App. There are my different programs. What I'm going to do is show the cost by program. And there's the cost field. And this being Excel, right? We can do really great things here. I can do some interesting color coding. And as is the case with most reports, it's always good to have some kind of graphical representation as well. So we will add the wonderful pie chart. And there you go. There's my cost by program report. And again, just a really simple example to show you. Obviously, you can see here we have quite the pivot table field list, all sorts of, of measures and dimensions. Dimensions are, are the fields by which you filter the group. Measures are those data points by which you're actually uh, looking at the data values themselves, cost work, things of that nature. Very simple report. At this point, you could take this, you could share it, send it off to somebody, you could save it local, you could save it to a SharePoint drive or a OneDrive if the uh, connection can be established to the data source as the data source data is updated, data in your report will be updated as well. Now let's go ahead, X out of this, and um, spend a couple minutes and I'll show you some of the reporting you can create when you get a little more advanced. For instance, if you want to use something like SQL reporting services, uh, this is showing starting at a very high level with a KPI dashboard. I have five KPIs, halt, cost, schedule, resource, quality. They're set at the project level with this report. We basically are aggregating those KPIs, in this case by project department. Corporate health plan, IT, legal ops, sales and marketing. I can change that aggregation if I want to see the aggregate by program. And again, kind of similar to the project center view except now basically we're focusing on KPIs. This is all about um, looking at the tracking of the organization. You know, it's all about analyzing KPIs. Now we're seeing aggregates by program. Switch it back to my departments. As you'll note, I have other options here. I can filter in and out items from certain departments. I can filter out and in items from certain statuses with regard to our methodology. And of course, I can filter in and out items from certain programs. Summary aggregation, health cost schedule doing great, resource quality, mediocre. And then uh, we can look down here at the other items. Um, if we find something interesting, I can certainly drill into more detail. For instance, IT. Let's go ahead and take a peek at that. We'll click right on the aggregation element, or right on the label, rather. This next report is just basically going to expose everything within IT. Project name, what status the project happens to be in, how complete it is, the start and finish date. We can see some indicators here. These, these little images are basically links to other reports that will, again, show us more details. A site link. This would bring us to the SharePoint site in which we can collaborate on information. And then, of course, these are the indicators 
that represent how the five KPIs happen to be tracking health, cost, schedule, resource, and quality. So if I were looking at, uh, for instance, this guy here, software development plan, my KPIs, health, cost, and quality, red, bad, schedule and resource, so-so. Uh, I could take this, again, a step further. Let's look at this status report. Uh, again, selecting the indicator for the status report. Here it is. Now, before we analyze the status report, the first thing I'm going to do is export this. And I'll go ahead and export this to PDF. The reason I'm doing this is because I want folks to see how these reports export because many times we see reports that look great on the screen. And then once you try to get a printout of them, it's a completely different story. And let's see, am I going to be successful with this? Let's try this one more time. We're going to go ahead and export this PDF. Open it up. And what I was really trying to do is get rid of my toolbar here somehow. And uh, this is just challenging me a little bit. Oh, there we go. Okay. There's my status report for the software development plan. Like I was saying, the, the, the reason for the export is just to show you that some technologies export extremely well. Uh, SQL reporting services, very, very good technology. Ultimate uh, technology with regard to the ability to calculate behind the scenes as well as to format as well as to export. Here we go. Software development plan, uh, status report, project leaders, sponsor, manager, stakeholders, the description. This is the status summary. Uh, if you recall earlier in the demo, we had that uh, one PDP that was meant to be filled out every reporting period. This is where the data is coming from. A chart or, or graph rather that's showing period and cumulative cost. Here are the five KPIs. Here is date information, start, finish, last published status. Here's a milestone graph showing 10 to 12 milestones. We can see the finish and the status. And you'll note that we have a, a click for more link. If we wanted to, I could click on this link. It would show more of these milestones. It would show actually a specific milestone report because we allowed these reports to be parameterized where the user can specify how many milestones to display to keep this to one page. Risks and issues, we're showing one of one. Again, hyperlinked. I could click on this link to look at all the risk information. I could click on this link here to go right to the site and view them all. Four of four issues. Click for more link to look at all the issues. So there is your, your status report. And this is just one example of um, a status report that you could possibly do. We've created quite a few. And then last but not least, let's click on that site link. Project sites are great for collaborating on. I'm just going to spend a few seconds here. Project site is basically a SharePoint site, one-to-one -one relationship, one SharePoint site for each project. This is for the software development plan. You'll see late and upcoming tasks. When certain phases or stages are due, depending on how you set it, we can store documents. We can create issues and risks. They can be attached to tasks if we were to look at documents. You can SharePoint technology. If you're familiar with SharePoint, you understand some of the capabilities by default. Um, but if we were to show you, you can edit, you can share this document, email a link, you can follow it, be alerted the moment it gets changed. Uh, some other things you can do, view, edit the properties for searching SEO. You can enforce a checkout in methodology, which would allow you to roll back to prior versions if need be. Uh, if there's some kind of approval process that you would like it to go through, workflows can be created and attached to these as well. Quite a bit of functionality, great app. Uh, great app as far as Project Server is concerned as well. Hopefully you learned something from this. I sure did. Thanks very much for your time.